Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the part B of the final video of databasing in Flash Builder. So if you're on YouTube, there were two parts of the final video, the fourth video, A and B, and this is B. And what we're going to do now, we've actually been working our way through auto code generation and creating all the methods we need to get our database working and uh, being changed by our data grid. So we've got our data grid in, and we've uh, got the token value objects working, and we've uh, has a we have an add data method. Now we're going to delete data. So let's go to the program and let's add the delete data method. So one of the issues is, is I have this data grid. Let me open this up a little bit. And I want to be able to talk this data grid so I can click on an item in the grid and tell it which item to delete. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drag a button from my uh, components menu and just drag a button to the stage. And I'm going to go ahead and just put delete. So just double click on the button and type in delete. And then I'm going to keep that highlighted so I can go to that button because I need to do something really important here. And I just want to give that button an ID name. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to auto generate its code stub. And in auto generating its code stub, I want to have a name in that code stub. So I'll put my delete. Now there's two ways to auto generate a code stub. You can just hit here, click, click. And see, it's supposed to return generate code stub, but it didn't in this case. Now, sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. And I just, I don't know if that's a glitch, or I've done something, or what. So what I'm going to do is go back to design mode. I'm going to click on that button, and I'm going to go to properties. And in the properties panel, you can see there's this little star right here, this little, like lightning bolt. That will auto-generate my code stub for me, so I'm just going to click on that, and hit generate event handler. And when I do that, we can see that an event handler was generated. Bring that open. And it says my delete underscore click handler. So basically, if you go back to the button, the delete button is right. Well, I can't find it. So I always just go back and I just click on the delete button. That takes me to the code where it's at. And there's my delete button. And now here's my handler. If I control click on that, it takes me to that handler right there. And now I want to put a services in there. I want to put the delete services. So I'm coming along here. I'm just going to copy this uh, PHP service name and paste it. Once again, not really writing any code. I'm going to hit a period and that's going to bring up all the code hitting. And I want to delete. And there's my delete method right there. And I'm going to delete by item ID. Now I'm going to get that item ID actually from the data grid. So I need to type a little bit of code. Now I have a code stub up here. I'm just going to copy and paste it just to save some time and we'll explain it. Let's paste that in. And basically what this code stub's doing is says that's the data grid. That's the ID of my data grid. And it says dot selected item. So whatever item I select, go to then get that ID. Stick that into delete book table method. And from my book table services, my PHP services, delete that row. Let's run it and see if it works. So here's my delete button here. Let's just click on an item in the uh, data grid and just hit delete. And boom, it's gone. Isn't that fantastic? It is that easy. So now let's add an update method. Okay, we've come to the point in the program that we actually have to write some code. And I'll tell you why. What I want to do is I actually uh, want to be able to click on an item in the data grid and essentially uh, create an item from that item. You don't want to start from scratch and, and type into these blank columns every time. You, typically uh, data is the same in certain ways. You to be changing numbers or such. And so it's nice to have some data to start off with. Also, I want to use this create data block and also update uh, the same, the same uh, text boxes. So just a little bit of code here. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this uh, button right here. So I'm just going to click on it and delete it. And, I'm, and when I did that, of course, I need, a, need a, uh, an update button. So I'm come along here and just drag another button on the, a create button, excuse me, drag another button on the stage. And then I'm going to have an update button as well. So I'll drag another button on the stage. And we'll call this create. And we'll call this update. Cool, making progress. And I want to basically put my function back in there. So let's come up here and find our click handler method. So let's go to the source code. And here was my create method right here. It's what it was called. So I'll go back to my button. I'll paste that in. So let's go to design. 
Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping here to get everything cleaned up looking the way I want it to look. And I'll just put a click there. And you just want event, not the mouse event. Cool. And so that'll enable me to create uh, using that button. And now we want to update as well. And this is pretty simple to do. Once again, I want to go in and give that button an ID so the click handler will have the right uh, name. So let's do that. And we'll call it my update. Cool. Let's see if we can generate a click handler here. So we'll hit click. And let's click on that. Hit return. And it didn't give me the auto generate uh, screen, and it should have, but when it doesn't, just go to properties and generate that as we did before. So here's your update click handler stub code that you're going to put some code in, but first you're going to see you got an error here, a little red here. Just click on that, go to that error, and what's happened here is that you've actually pulled a button out. It doesn't like that, so you just get rid of this. There's no default button anymore in your form, and you don't want the button in your form, by the way. And I think that's okay. Let's save that and see if that error goes away. And it does, then we're good. And now let's put in the uh, method for your update. Now, once again, all you need is this book service. Let's copy that. Paste that. Cool. And uh, I want the update method. So I just use my dot, and that gives up all my code hinting. I'll have update. Oh, let's try that again dot and hit up there's update book service right there and what do I want to update I actually want to update the value object item and the object value item remember that and so I am just going to copy that it's called book table and that is all there is to doing that but then there's one more thing you need to do you need to populate that text box and so we're going to add another method in our data grid so when we click on an item it populates the text box, the book table value item text boxes. So what I want to do now is add a click handler to my data grid. So when I click on it, it populates this uh, value object item book table. And then I can create, delete based upon data that I already have in the uh, data grid. So let's click on the data grid and let's go to there. And let's see if we can generate, uh, auto generate a click handler. So I'm hit click. Let's click on that or hit return. And there is my generate click handler. It popped up. Sometimes it doesn't, and I just go to the properties panel. And if it does, you just click on it. And you've just generate your click handler. Let's click on that. And now I have to actually write some lines of code. So let me come up here. I've got a code stub here already. And so let's copy that and paste that in the click handler. And so let me explain what this is actually doing. It's actually uh, taking the text values of your uh, value object. Let's go to design. And so the text value items have certain names. And these are the names of those text value items. If I click on one of those and actually go to source code, you can see, well, there's the ID, my ID text input. And so it's going to take, uh, basically, when you click on this uh, data grid item, it's going to take the selected item from the data grid and stick it into that text box. Same thing for title, image, video, and description. So now you can actually work with data that you already have. Let's run this and see if it works. So now when I click on a data item, it populates the entire data item. I can start now by adding two. So I have to, in a sense, have to start from scratch. I already got some data in there. And since it's all pretty much the same, I just hit that and hit create. And boom, I got item two. And if I want to update now, I can actually click here and hit update. Or I could update item one. And see, when I click on that, it actually populates what I need to update. Let's update item one and say chapter one B, for example. I hit update and that changes it to a B. But those changes for update are not changed. For create and delete they are. But it holds it. I can actually revert that data. Uh, and what I actually need to do is go in there and actually hit commit to make those update changes stay. So we're gonna look at that next. Okay to move things along I've actually went ahead and added the revert update button and the save update button. And as shown before, I auto-generated the code, and then I put the code stubs in that I needed. So let's go to source and take a look at the code stubs. So I'm going to source, and I generated these code stubs. And for the uh, revert handler, what I did is I put book service dot get data manager, book service dot data manager book table dot revert changes, and that will basically take your update changes and revert them. And if you want to save those changes, for the my save handler, I put book service dot commit, and that will commit everything to the database. Let's test this and see if it works. 
So here's my database. So if I click on something, say I want to change this to chapter 1B, type a B in there, and I hit update, it updates it, but I hit but if I hit revert changes, it, it basically takes it back. So let's hit update again. Now if I hit save update, that commits it to the database, and it's saved. If I hit revert, then again, it does not change it. So there you have it. Just one more thing to do, and we're done with this application. The application that you downloaded from the web, and you can see I've created everything except the read by ID. And so you want to go ahead and do that yourself as an exercise. And once again, it's just putting the button in there, generating the code stub, and uh, generating the form that you might need. So now you have all the tools that you need to generate the complete form uh, using everything that you've learned in this tutorial. So this is Mike Lively. Thanks for listening.